Welcome to the Mesa City Council meeting for October the 1st. Uh, all of our council is present. We're going to begin our meeting today with an invocation offered by Pastor Tim Lesher from the Bridge Church followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Father God, I come before you today first to say thank you. Thank you for the great country that we live in, the great city, and the freedoms that we have been given. Thank you for the men and women in this room that have chosen to serve this great city of ours. I pray today that you would give them wisdom and guidance as they discuss the issues and the topics at hand. I pray for justice for all citizens of our city. I pray and ask for unity of mind amongst those present here today. Guide them to the best decisions for every citizen in this city. I pray that you would bring peace over our city, watch over and protect our first responders and those who keep our city safe. And Father God, I thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And I ask that you would bless this time now. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, the first agenda item we have is awards and recognitions, and we have three great uh, awards and recognitions tonight. First up are the Historic Preservation Awards. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, these are given to residents who have made an extraordinary impact on our community. Here to present the awards is Historic Preservation Board Chair Greg Merrick. Greg? Greg? Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, as the Mayor mentioned, I'm Chair of the City of Mesa Historic Preservation Board. And tonight, uh, we are recognizing the individuals and an organization that have made significant contributions to historic preservation in the City of Mesa. The, city, uh, the Historic Preservation Board and the Mesa City Council have been recognizing Mesa preservationists with the Historic Preservation Awards annually since 1998, making this our 20th anniversary. There's been a lot of uh, successes over that 20 year period. So tonight we uh, have awards for contributions in the following categories for local preservationists, rehabilitation and restoration, stewardship, and education and outreach. And uh, after the awards are presented, uh, if all the award recipients would uh, stay in the front row, there will be photographs with the, uh, with the council afterwards. So the first award this evening is the Local Preservationist Award to Amy Mahoney. This is for her work in initiating and championing the creation of the Flying Acres Historic District. Flying Acres is a 34-home single-family subdivision with a period of significance between 1940 and 1957. It's one of our post-World War II neighborhoods. It's located between North Grand on the west, North McDonald on the east, and both sides of 8th Place and West 9th Street. Amy spent countless hours of gathering support from property owners and discussing with them the benefits of being a historic district. She collaborated with the City of Mesa Historic Preservation staff as well as residents of other historic districts uh, to help navigate the designation process. Through her efforts, Flying Acres is a designated local historic district and soon to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. This is Mesa's eighth designated historic district. So I'd like to pre present the word to Amy. Have a nice little over nice. there oh, and a certificate. Thank you. Okay, thank you very Anyone? much. The second award this evening is to Bill Cummard for rehabilitation and restoration. Uh, Bill's grandfather built the house at 456 North Robson, which is located in the Evergreen Historic District. Due to modifications made to the home over the years, the house was not considered a contributing property to the historic district when the Evergreen Historic District was designated. 
Bill worked tirelessly in renovating the home to remove the modifications that made it a non-contributing property to the historic district. Because of Bill's work and diligence, in June of this year, the keeper of the National Register of Historic Places approved an amendment to the Evergreen Historic District that reclassified the home as a contributor to the historic district. So it is now on the National Register. So I'd like to present this award to Bill. The uh, next award is actually a dual award to Sandra Sutton Andrews and Christine Close for stewardship. And this is for their efforts to designate the Westside Clark Historic District as a local historic district. The general boundaries of this district are west of Country Club to date and from the north side of Second Place to the south side of Pepper Place. The district consists of four contributing single family residential subdivisions planted between 1930 and 1947, and a single post-historic subdivision platted in 1973. The district takes its name from the West Side Addition, the earliest subdivision platted in the neighborhood, and from the Clark family that was associated with the establishment of three of the four subdivisions. The pre-World War II subdivisions in the northern part of the district contained the oldest homes, these subdivisions represent the first westward leap beyond the edge of the Mesa town site. The two later subdivisions platted after the end of World War II represents the era of rapid construction and population expansion that characterized Mesa's west side after the war. The na these neighborhoods were listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2010, but they were never submitted for local historic designation. Because of the work of Sandra and Christine, who went door to door talking to property owners about the importance of local designation, organized meetings, gathered signatures, held fundraisers, their efforts were rewarded last year when the city council designated the neighborhoods as a local historic district. And I would like to present the awards to both uh, Sandra and Christine. Because we couldn't have done it without residents and other volunteers. Um, and so at least four of them are here tonight. Jenny Erickson, Gladys Kakimbo, Abini Jackson, and Sam Itza, who uh, either gathered signatures or, or held a fund, helped fund, hold the fundraisers for us. So um, thank you all, too. And also all of the others. There were many. Oh, it's always I a team effort. You exactly. get one of these, too. You should get one of these, too. <laughs> and the uh, last award tonight is awarded to the Mesa Preservation Foundation for education and outreach for its work in documenting and researching the Buck Buckhorn Baths property. Uh, this iconic Mesa property was purchased by a private party uh, last September. The fate of this historic property is uncertain. Due to the efforts of the Mesa Preservation Foundation, most notably uh, Vic Lenoff and Ron Peters, the history of this property is preserved and recorded. First, Ron Peters prepared the nomination for the National Register of Historic Places and helped shepherd it through the process. The Buckhorn Baths was placed on the National Register in 2005. Ron also prepared a detailed architectural documentation of the property, so if the unfortunate happens and the property is lost, we still have a record of what was on the property and where everything was located. Finally, both Ron Peters and Vic Linoff wrote a book published by Arcadia Publishing called Buckhorn Mineral Baths and Wildlife Museum. The book contains a history of the Buckhorn Baths and includes hundreds of photographs. Proceeds from the book go to the Mesa Preservation, Pres Preservation Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Because of the efforts of the Mesa Preservation Foundation, the history of the Buckhorn Baths is well preserved. And tonight, I'm pleased to award this award to the Mesa Preservation Foundation, and Ron Peters will be accepting on behalf of the 
Foundation. I always like to address this august body. Um, I would like to thank the city. Um, a lot of people don't know how hard the city and the city manager worked to try to save the buckhorn. And we passed a bond issue, the citizens got behind it, and we very much tried to push that through. And Chris did a bang up job of trying to negotiate a uh, purchase of the buckhorn, but it wasn't to be. So this book that we did, the Preservation Foundation did, was to record that so that if something does happen to the property, <laughs> and I hope it doesn't, but that we have a strong record of uh, not only the buildings, but the history of Alice and Ted Sliger, who were so important to this community. So I'd like to thank the city, because this is your award, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that concludes the awards. And if all the Great. award recipients will come up front here, I guess we'll Great. have Council, uh, please join me at the podium and for some photographs. The rest of the council has to buy one because the proceeds go to the family. I'll be happy to loan it to them if they Oh, yeah, no, please do buy it. Oh, thank you. I grew up in that neighborhood, but at the corner of the Royce and the Knights was that. Cheese. Yeah. 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 Thank you. If we, if the meeting goes long, I might have to make a wardrobe change. This is uh, the buckhorn bath uh, necktie. I'm looking forward to wearing that at a future council meeting. Uh, thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, a presentation, uh, our uh, award rec proclaiming September the 15th through October the 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month. And I'm going to hand the reading over to Vice Mayor Luna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I I wasn't going to read the all that proclamation, but it's got really important information. And I think the public needs to know about it. So I'll begin with, whereas in 1968, Congress passed legislation to honor uh, the extraordinary contributions of culture of Hispanic Americans, and whereas the National Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates and recognizes the contributions of Hispanic Americans that have made to American society and culture and to honor five of our Central American neighbors who celebrate their independence in September. and. Whereas almost 60 years later, the city of Mesa celebrates Latino Americans and the anniversaries of independence for Latin American countries of Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, as well as Mexico's independence on September 16th. And whereas the first Hispanics arrived in Mesa in the mid 19th century and have been Mesa for over 100 years. And whereas in the last 10 years, the number of Latinos has significantly increased, making Latinos an essential part of Mesa's growth and redevelopment. And whereas Mesa is a city that supports Latino-owned businesses who help drive our economy and contribute to the Mesa, to city's success, and whereas the city of Mesa opens our arms and provides assistance through our city departments to support Latino-owned businesses to locate, thrive, and expand in Mesa. Therefore, you, Mayor, authorized vest, vested as, as, as mayor September 15th through October 15th, 2008 as National Hispanic Heritage Month. And so 
I wanted to share a few statistics that Marisa provided for me, my former assistant, that Maricopa County has a fifth largest Hispanic population in the county that in the U.S. at 30 percent. Hispanics are 28.1 percent of the population of the city of Mesa. Mesa Public Schools has a majority minority students population of 42 percent Hispanics and Mesa Community College is now designated as Hispanic serving institution serving over 25 percent Hispanics in the student population. So I wanted also to point out are some of our employees from the Hispanic network if, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand as well as our Facebook in Espanol. They're brightly colored and we wanted to go ahead and <laughs> and they're brightly colored here and we wanted to go ahead and, and uh, hand them the proclamation and invite council to, to celebrate with them. Members that I could fill in right back here. Or, what do you think? Can you get us all in? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all you doing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor Luna. Uh, finally, tonight, uh, the Mesa City Council, and this is going to come as a surprise to someone, would like to recognize Assistant City Manager Carrie Kent. <laughs> Carrie was recently named a top 10 finalist for the Women in Leadership Trailblazer Award from the National League of Women in Government. Carrie was selected by a panel comprised of League of Women in Government and the National Research Center. She was one of 56 women nominated for this award. Uh, at the city of Mesa, Carrie oversees many departments, including, and this is a long list, I'm sorry, <laughs> development services, energy resources, engineering, transportation, water resources, parks, recreation, and community facilities. She also mentors the executive manager program where city employees work in the city manager's office for three months on special projects while learning about city management. She was nominated for her leadership at the city of Mesa and in organizations such as the Arizona City Council, City County Management Association, or ACMA, and the Arizona Chapter of Women Leading Government. She co-founded the ACMA Women Leading Government Facebook page and supports the growing City of Mesa staff, staff membership in the Alliance for Innovation. Ms. Kent, the City Council and I would like to recognize you for this achievement and thank you for all the work you do on behalf of the residents of Mesa. We are a very lucky city to have you uh, working with us. Thank you very much. Council, please join me in presenting a small token to Carrie. It's hard to pull off a surprise around here, isn't it? <laughs> I was going to say, I have to have a little color here in my blue. To my blue. You know, we always joke about the rose in the, in the middle of the thorns, but it's literally a rose in the middle of the thorns. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dropping your petals. Oh, we're dropping. I'm dropping my petals. Oops. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, Carrie is a much loved figure at the city of Mesa, and we uh, we truly are very fortunate to have her. Uh, keeping us straight around here. So thank you, Carrie, for all you do. Um, the next item on our agenda is to take action on the consent agenda. So we invite Mr. Kevin Christopher forward to read the consent agenda. 
Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council member or citizen requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. If a citizen wants an item removed, a blue card must be completed and given to the City Clerk prior to the Council's vote on the consent agenda. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for Downtown Mesa Association. One day event, Saturday October 6th, 922 South Country Club Drive. Item 3B, Act on Liquor License Application for Sweet Adelines International, Saturday, October 20th, 2215 North 56th Street. Item 3C, Act on Liquor License Application for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Incorporated, one day event, Saturday, October 20th, 1924 West Rio Salado Parkway. Item 3D, Act on Liquor License Application for Protect the Children Incorporated, one day event, Saturday, October 13th, 922 South Country Club Drive. Item 3 E, Act on Liquor License Application for Filibertos, 5249 East Brown Road. Item 4A, Act on One-Year Renewal of the Term Contract for Special Events Management Services for various city departments, as requested by the Public Information and Communications Office. Item 4B, Act on an 11-month term contract with four years of renewable options for furniture products and services, including design and installation services for the Business Services Department supporting citywide use. Item 4C, Act on Three-Year Term Contract with two years of renewal options for weed management and landscape services at the water reclamation and treatment plants for the Water Resources Department. Item 4D, act on nine-month term contract with four years of renewal options for flooring products and services for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 4E, act on ratification of the emergency purchase and dollar limit threshold for storm cleanup and tree removal services for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 4F, act on 21-month term contract with two years of renewal options for science and lab supplies and equipment for the Water Resources Department. Item 4G, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for replacement SCADA radios for the materials and supply warehouse for the water and energy resources departments. Item 4H, act on contract for purchase of body armor for the fire and medical department. Item 4I, act on contract for pre-construction services for the ropes and electrical substation East Bay Rebuild Project, 265 South Robeson. This project is funded by 2014 electric bonds. Item 5A, act on resolution endorsing the creation of the Country Club Estates Irrigation Water Delivery District that is generally bounded by West Mountain View Drive on the north, West 9th Street on the south, North Alma School on the west, and Eureka Canal on the east. Final designation of the district is determined by the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Item 5B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into the Second Amendment to the non-exclusive 2003 Cable Television and Renewal License with Cox Communications Arizona, LLC. Item 5C, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into the First Amendment of the Cable Television License Agreement with Quest Broadband Services Incorporated, doing business as CenturyLink. Item 6A, Introduction of Ordinance regarding ZON 18-00066, the 1,000 through 1,100 blocks of South Alma School Road and the 1,200 through 1,300 blocks of West Southern Avenue, located at the northwest corner of Alma School Road and Southern Avenue. Rezone and site plan review to allow for development of multi-residential and commercial uses. Item 7A, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00384, the 2,800 to 2,900 block of South Signal Butte Road and the 10,600 to 10,800 block of East Guadalupe. Road. This is located on the south side of Guadalupe Road on the west side of Signal Butte Road. Rezone and site plan review for development of a group commercial center. And item 7B, act on ordinance regarding ZON 18-00451, the 1700 block of South Pierpont, located north of Baseline Road and west of Higley Road. Rezone, site plan review, and special use permit for parking reduction for a hospital. This request will allow for development of a rehabilitation hospital as part of a future medical complex. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Kevin. I see there's been a motion and a second for the approval. Ms. Mickelson, have we had any requests to speak on an item on the consent agenda? Okay. Thank you, Council. Please vote. Uh, the vote is unanimous in favor of the consent agenda. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 8, that is to conduct a public hearing prior to the release of the petition for signatures for annexation case ANX 18-471 for property located south of University Drive and east of Signal Butte Road, approximately 9 point, I'm sorry, 5.91 plus or minus acres. I declare the public hearing open. Ms. I M Ms. Mickelson, has anyone requested to speak on this item? Thank you. Do any council members wish to speak on this item? 
I declare the public hearing closed. There is no action on this item at this time. This annexation case will come back before the council at a future council meeting to vote on the annexation of this property. Next item on our agenda is items from citizens present. Ms. Mickelson, do we have any requests to speak? Thank you. That being the case, council, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Freeman. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>